entering into a two-part sermon series on serving. And this morning, part number one, we have entitled it, Serving Each Other. Serving Each Other. And so in this short series, it is to remind us of the importance of serving. Listen, as a follower of Jesus, serving is a part of who we are as Christians. Serving is a part of our DNA as being followers of Jesus. Not only do we serve people in the community, but we are also to serve one another. That we are to serve the brethren. And the main place where we are able to serve one another is within the local church. Everyone who claims the name of Christ should be serving in some capacity in the local church. Because the Lord has given each and every one of us gifts and talents to be used in the local church to serve his people. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 tells us this. It says, as each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That the gift God has given you should be used, listen to me, in the house of God to serve the people of God for the glory of God. That the gift God has given me and given you should be used in the house of God to serve the people of God for the glory of God. Listen, if you're not serving in some capacity in the local church within Mount Calvary, can I tell you you're being a bad steward? If you're being a bad steward of the gift of the grace God has given you to give to the church. A good steward of their gifts helps the local church. A good steward of their talents serves the body. That God has called all of us to be good steward over the things he has given us. To be good steward over what I call the four T's. Our time, treasure, talent, and testimony. We should be good stewards over our time, good stewards over our treasure, good stewards over our testimony, telling people what God has done in us and through us, and good stewards over our talent. And this morning, we're going to talk about the talent, because the truth of the matter is, many of us are wasting some of our teens. If you're not serving in some way, we are missing out on the grace of God that he has put inside of you for the local church. As a matter of fact, one of the ways we show that we are Christians is when we love and serve the brethren. One of the ways that we show that we believe in Christ is because we serve each other. The author of the book of Hebrews it brings this to us in, in light of our text this morning. And now we're not sure who the author of the book of Hebrews is because he does not identify himself. Now some people believe now that it's the Apostle Paul who wrote the book of Hebrews. But, but I would push against that because whenever Paul writes a letter, he always identifies himself. In the beginning of the letter, he tells you who's writing the letter. He says, I, Paul, or bond servant of Jesus Christ, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. No one identifies themselves in the book of Hebrews. But, but whoever he is, he reminds us of the importance of serving. He reminds us of the importance of serving one another. The author is writing to Jewish Christians and encouraging them to stay strong in the faith. And he's encouraging them not to turn their back on Jesus. Many of the believers during the first century church were being persecuted because of their faith in Jesus. Because they believed in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, people in the Jewish community began to come against them. Many of them were losing important relationships in their lives. All because they were following after Christ. Many of them were, were losing and being disowned by their families. Their families didn't want anything to do with them anymore. Uh, some of them were being excommunicated from the synagogues. The, the place where all of the Jewish people assembled, they were being kicked out. And some of the Christian Jews would begin to think, well, I don't know if it's worth all of this. I don't know if it's worth all of this. They begin to think about turning back to their old lifestyle. 
going back to Judaism. So, so the Hebrew writer tells him, listen, don't turn around. Stay strong in the faith. Amen. Stick with Jesus. Amen. Listen, if you have been enduring some hard times since you've given your life to Jesus, can I encourage you? Stick with Jesus. Amen. If you've been enduring some, some difficulties ever since you've named the name of Christ, let me encourage you. Stick with Jesus. Amen. Don't turn around. Don't go back to your old lifestyle. Hold on to Christ. Amen. It's not the time to turn away and fall away when hard times come. No, when hard times come, You, you dig in deep and you fight to stay focused on Christ. You dig in deep and get into your word and get into prayer. You, you dig in deep and you, you get connected with other believers and begin to read your Bible with them and, and be connected with the local church. Don't leave the church. Stay connected to the church. Amen. You got to tell yourself, listen, I ain't going to quit. I ain't going to turn away. I'm not going to walk away from Jesus. Because sometimes you got to tell yourself, this is what we ain't going to do, self. This is where we ain't going to go. This ain't how we, we ain't going to think like this. And the author of Hebrews tells the first century readers, he says, he says, but beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. He says, listen, we don't believe you are, you are reading this letter. We don't believe you are turning away from Jesus because we see some things concerning you. Mm -hmm. We see something about you. Matter of fact, we see that you are a Christian because we see something in you. Our lives should exemplify that we believe in Jesus. That the way we live should show the world that Jesus is our Lord and our King. But what are some of those things when people look at you and they say, oh yeah, she got to be a Christian. Oh yeah, he has to be a believer. What are those things? Those things are, verse number nine, those things that accompany salvation. That some things are supposed to happen in our lives when we believe in Christ. When we say we believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, something should happen in us and through us. There's some things that's supposed to accompany our salvation. Because we're in the family of God, some stuff's supposed to show up. Some stuff, some, some, some evidence is supposed to show up. An evidence of a changed life. That, that something is different about you now. You, you, want the, you want the same no more. You don't cuss everybody out now that you done got with Jesus. You don't drink every day since you done got with Jesus. You don't smoke with everybody since you got with Jesus. Jesus. 
You, you don't like Christians. And you don't like reading your Bible. Or you don't like praying. And you don't like helping people. You don't like giving. I would encourage you to seriously question if you believe in Jesus. Yeah. Right. Seriously question if you really believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Because Christians are growing in those things. Right? They're growing in wanting to read their Bible. They're growing in wanting to love people. They're growing in wanting to worship Christ. They're growing in wanting to give and to help. Now, you don't start out at 100, but you grow it. Yeah. Yeah. If every time you turn around and you 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 mad and upset about Christ, <laughs> but what he's asking you to do, what the Bible tells you to do, I would I would encourage you to seriously question if you really know him. Because you know those who know him are growing to become like him. Amen. Christians have fruit. They have evidence. They have things that accompany their salvation. Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23 says that they are the fruit of the Spirit, and we should be growing in the fruit of the Spirit. The growing in love. In, in unconditional love. Growing in it. Now, we don't start there, but we grow it. When we're growing in joy, cheerfulness in the midst of difficulties. We're growing in peace, having internal harmony on the inside of us. We're, we're growing in love and long suffering. Yeah. You, you're growing in patience. Yeah. Yeah. You don't fly off the handle as soon as you get mad. Right. You, 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 you grow. Right. You're growing in kindness, growing in goodness. Goodness is being able to help other people. They ain't got to help you first for you to help them. You grow. So you help them even though they don't help you. Growing in faithfulness. Faithfulness is being able to rely on Christ. Listen, over time, you should grow more and more and more in being able to rely on Jesus. Growing in gentleness. Gentleness is humility. That we should be growing in how humble we are. That, that Christians should not be full of pride. Full, full of haughtiness. We should be growing in lastly in self-control. In self-restraint. That everything that comes to your mind don't let it come out your mouth. Amen. That, you, that you're growing. Right? That, that you slow down because you believe in Jesus. You slow down to think about what you're going to say before you say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That there should be some, some evidence, some, some things that accompany our salvation. But there should be some other things the Hebrew writer tells us that should also accompany our salvation. It's in verse number 10. It says, It's your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Uh, another thing that accompanies our salvation is work and a labor of love. That our serving shows that we're saved. We are saved to serve. serve to get saved but because we're saved we serve because we know Jesus we should serve his body because we're in a relationship with him we should serve others who are in relationship with him that our service should display that we believe in Christ you working and laboring out of love for Christ shows that you have salvation. You ministering and serving because you love Christ shows that you are in a relationship with Him. Listen, if you are not serving and working in the church because you love Jesus, then why are you working? If you're not doing it because you love Him and you want to glorify Him, 
and his name to be proclaimed, then why are you serving? You shouldn't be serving just so you can give an applause. Yeah. Listen, I get it. Everybody want a pat on the back. But you shouldn't be serving just so you can get a pat on the back. And you shouldn't be serving so that people can say, oh my God, look how nice he is. Look how kind she is. That is not why you should be serving. You should be serving because you're connected to the head and you're part of the body. And if you're not serving, but you say, oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And you know, me and Jesus, we in a relationship. I love him. But if you ain't serving him, how can you say you love him? Listen, don't just tell me you love me, but when I need help, you ain't going to show up. That ain't love. You just emotional. Show me something. You got to show up. Don't just be saying, oh, I got goosebumps. That goosebumps ain't going to do nothing for me. I need you to show up and help me. The Hebrew writer says to the readers, he said, listen, I know y'all saved. I know y'all saved because y'all are working and serving for God. I, I know y'all saved because you're laboring because you love Jesus. And you want his name to be glorified. I know you saved because you're working in love to minister to the saints. One of the ways we love on God is by loving the saints. One of the ways that we love God by loving His church. One of the ways we serve the Lord is by serving the church. One of the ways we minister unto God is by ministering to Christians. Our love for Jesus should flow out in our love for people. Especially the church. We are to love everybody. And especially the church. The same thing now applies to serving. Our serving the Lord should overflow in our serving of people, especially the church. Don't say you love Jesus and you don't love his church. How can you say you love the head but not the body? That's kind of weird, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm all in love with his head. He's a nice looking man. I love him. But his body just terrible. I hate it. Listen, you gotta take all of it. It's a total package. Right? right? Yeah. It is what it is, right? You may got a cute face, but his body all out of shape. Hey, guess what? If you take one, you gotta take the other. You take the both. <laughs> Ladies don't like that. Like, that you that don't really get an exercise. <laughs> Stuff. 
No. That's not what the Hebrew writer says. The Hebrew writer says in verse 11, he says, we desire that each one of you show the same diligence. Everybody is supposed to be serving in the household of faith. Every one of us who claim the name of Jesus must love him and love one another. Must serve him and serve one another. Every single Christian in the household of God should be serving one another. We are to have the same diligence the same commitment. This commitment now should be shown verse 11 until the end. As long as you live you are to serve Christ and his church. As long as you live you are to love Christ and his church. You are to serve in some ministry, some capacity, using your gifts and your talents in a ministry until the end. All right. All right. And listen, we ain't asking you to serve in every ministry. Just pick one. Just pick, just pick one. Come to one service, pick one ministry to serve in, get in one small group. Listen, that ain't gonna take you a day. You remember how church used to be? All day. <laughs> we don't just get you out before the game, we get you out so you can go and tell that. Listen, what you want? What you want, baby? How fast do you want church? We get you out, baby. You get in on time, you get out on time. Matter of fact, if you come late, you still get out on time.